So the key mistake here is that archers think there should be a complete gap between the leather and the knock. So, and I used to think this too, they think that when you put the, the knock on the string and the leather, there should be, and I can't do it with my tab because I haven't cut the leather that much, but there should be a complete gap and there should be space. So there you can see it's kind of just floating in between like that. So they think there should be a complete gap. This is not true. And the key thing here is, when you locate your tab on the string, you need a consistent way to put your tab at the same height. If you have a free space between the leather at the top, the knock, and then the leather at the bottom, on each shot, you're gonna be putting your tab in a different place on the string, effectively. So if you imagine, if you've got space, one time you're gonna put it here, the next time you might put it here, the next time you might put it here. So it's gonna be different. So what you wanna do is the best way to do this is when you put your tab on the string, you locate upwards. So, and when I mean upwards, I mean you just touch the leather of the tab to the knock. So I'll bend back the, the top of the tab here, but you just touch. So if I put this here and this is the arrow, you just go like that. So I'll turn it around so you can see, you just go like that. So when you're putting the, the tab on the string and you're hooking the string, you just locate upwards and touch the knock with the leather. So what that does is it gives you a consistent place. And you might think this is gonna cause issues because it's you know interfering with the arrow. It doesn't, as long as you're not touching with your finger. And that, like, as you can see in this picture here, this is Lee Woo Suk's uh, hook. And you can clearly see that the tab is touching the knock of the arrow. It doesn't have an impact. And also you can see on this tab, on my tab here, you can see the fold here in the tab where the knock goes. So you can see this little groove is where the knock goes. And that is from the tab touching into the knock. So the key thing here is people often, when they trim their leather, they try and make the gap big enough to have a complete gap between the two. So that gives them inconsistency in where they're putting their hand on the string and that will give them up and downs. And then also because they've got this gap now, what they've actually done often to do that is they've cut the top part here. They've cut this top part of the tab leather and lowered it in order to make that gap. And the reason most people do this is because the top one here is actually not very wide, so they don't really wanna cut into this one. Um, so they often cut the top here, make it bigger, and now they've got a gap. But that's done two things. They've got a big gap, so it's up and down inconsistent. And also, also it's moved the, in the middle finger here, it's moved it up relative to where the leather is. So when you locate on the string, it's more likely you're gonna hit the arrow with your middle finger and push the arrow up, maybe off the rest or onto the button and get all sorts of issues. Because now when you're locating on the string, your middle finger is too close to the arrow. So the best way, like I said, locate upwards. Don't cut this part of the leather unless you really have to. You want, like I said before, if I go through this way, you want the leather, and you can see here, the leather at the bottom here, it's pretty much in line with my finger. The leather at the top here is higher than my middle finger, and that's deliberate, because that means when I locate upwards, I can touch the knock of the arrow with the tab without touching the knock of the arrow with my middle finger. So there's finger clearance, which is what you do want, but also a consistent way to hook onto the string. If you're struggling with a bit of the, the gap between the arrow, so say for example, if your leather is really tight around the knock, then try and trim the bottom part of the top bit of the leather. So you can trim a little bit of this bit, but often you don't need to do a lot. You can trim just a tiny bit here, but that's what I would do instead of trimming the other one. Um, and this is really, really key so that you get a, a good consistent hook and you don't mess it up in terms of hitting the arrow off the rest. Now, before we finish up today, there's two mistakes that people make with their tab and when they hook on the string specifically. The first one is they think, and I used to, I don't have no idea why I used to think this, but I used to think that the line, the groove that you put on the tab from the string over time needs to be perfectly straight. So if we look here at the tab, I used to think that the string groove, which you can clearly see is diagonal here. I used to think that that string groove needed to be perfectly straight and completely alongside the metal of the tab here. So I used to try and get it perfectly straight. And this is, <laughs> honestly, I think a lot of people 
uh, try and do this and a lot of people think it needs to be straight and this is one of the easiest ways to just destroy your whole technique and I don't even mean I'm not exaggerating I don't mean just this side I mean if you try and do that if you try and get that string groove straight alongside you will do this and because you're doing that it's going to wreck this shoulder movement and because this shoulder can't move you can't get your bow shoulder into line it just completely <laughs> it completely destroys everything so the string groove does not need to be straight and it does not need to be up against the tab you can see here it's quite angled that is absolutely fine and actually desirable because that gives you the hook that you want it gives you the finger pressure on your fingers of the hook here that you want and it allows you to keep the hand relaxed and also to get a good anchor as well and again just as extra evidence for this you can see Lee Woo Sook's picture of the tab again definite angled line of the string groove on the tab and then again you can see this one's not when he's shooting but this is Kim Woo Jin's tab from before and you can see there even when it's rested you can see the tab line is firmly kind of grooved in there and it's a marked angle and this is not an issue at all and is actually what you want so that's the first thing I wanted to mention is you really don't need to try and grab the tab and make the line perfectly straight up against the metal. Now the final mistake that people make is they don't retune when they change their tab or even when they change the leather on their tab. As much as manufacturers try, leather always comes in different widths um, and it, it basically changes the tune of the tab because the leather is thicker or thinner which obviously changes the weight of the leather also how much it bends sometimes it's stiffer or more flexible that changes the tune of your bow so if you change your tab leather even with the same tab if I change my tab leather sometimes it can make a difference in the tune as much as like two to three pounds of draw weight so if you don't tune, if you don't retune your bow once you've changed your leather you could wonder why the hell you're shooting so badly and your groups are terrible, but actually it's just because your tune has now changed. And then obviously, if you go from a completely different tab to a new one, including the metal part, the spacer, all of that, the difference can be huge. It can be four to five pounds in terms of the tuning sometimes, depending on what you're doing, how you're hooking the string, all that kind of thing. If you think about it logically, this is the bit of the shot where your fingers are leaving the string. That's the bit of the shot which is affecting how much the string moves left to right and ultimately that is what affects the tune of the arrow. So it can have a massive effect and make sure to retune and regularly check your tune when you're modifying your tab. And even if you're not modifying it, like I said, rechecking your tune, because if you have a new tab, you shoot it for three months, that's gonna be two different tabs effectively because it's gonna get stiffer as you shoot, it's gonna get worn in and you might have to retune. So my preferred way of doing this is I shoot a tab, I wear it in for maybe a week or two, I tune at that point, that is the point I'm tuning at, and then when I get new leather, I try and do that regularly, so I'm not going too much up and down in terms of the stiffness of the tab, and the tune is fairly stable, basically. But that's a crucial point here, and maybe if you're wondering what's happened recently when you change your tab and your tune's not great, that might be the cause of it. So that was everything you need to know about modifying and setting up your tab. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to tap that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.